Guys, it's hard to admit, but in the 13 years I live in Germany, I've been scammed a lot. So if you're new to Europe or traveling here, you're an obvious target for scammers. They're gonna try to take your money, they're gonna try to give you a free rose, it's not actually free, they're gonna up the meter in a taxi. Find out how one rose could be the beginning of your downfall. Welcome back, I'm Jeff. And I'm Alex. And we're two Americans who've been living in Germany for over 10 years. And we're here to share our experiences with all of you. Exactly. Now, whether you're living or traveling in Europe, scammers and pickpockets are gonna take advantage of the fact that you're distracted. Yep. You don't know the language. Yep. And you just generally don't know what the hell is going on. Yes. And they know that you don't know anything. So they're gonna take advantage of that fact. <laughs> yes. One of the first things that you'll do when you land in a new place where they're moving there or as a tourist. So you've landed at Berlin's BER airport. What might you take? That sucks for you. <laughs> uh, you might take a taxi into the no. city because uh, you're going from the States, you don't understand it. Right. It's actually incredible. It's like, yeah, yeah, I'll take a taxi. It's quicker, it's easier. I'm on vacation, I'll spend the money. You're trying, I don't maybe care. you just flew 12 hours. You want to get to that hotel. Exactly. Right? I yeah. do it sometimes too, yeah. so no no, no hate. Sometimes you just want to sit in a nice little comfy uh, Mercedes and get traveled to your because own. Because the average taxi in Germany is a Mercedes, which yeah. is one of the first things that I noticed, which is really cool. What's not cool is when some taxi drivers, not all, but some will try to take advantage of you. And one of the first scams that they'll try to pull on you I'll is- I'll make it clear, not even most, some. Right, some, that's what I said, some. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> is the not using the meter. Now, of course, the meter is once you get in a taxi, that meter should come on right away. And it is showing the length of your trip and you see that money count going up so you know exactly how much things are gonna cost. Now, what can happen is they notice you're a tourist, you're not paying attention. They don't turn that meter on they drive the half an hour to the destination, and then when they get there, they are free to tell you it is whatever price they want it to be. Yeah, uh, it has not happened to me because I always look at the meter and I barely take taxis because they, taxis kind of scare me. I don't know why. Hmm, weird. Yeah, I don't know. Well, I mean, we're getting into a few examples of maybe why. Maybe, maybe this is yeah. why. <laughs> These are things to watch out for so you're not scared, so you go in confidence to that taxi. Yeah, oh, oh, always make sure there's a meter. Uh, if you have to pay in uh, with a card, Double check that you're allowed to pay with the card, especially here in Germany. Some yeah. taxis only take um, cash. That's just a little uh, heads up for you. Yeah, absolutely. Now, and this has happened to me a few times in Germany and also in Greece, where uh, a few minutes into the ride, I noticed there was no meter. I asked for the meter be to be turned on. They gave me some guff. I just say, hey, pull the car over, and I get out, and I get somebody who is reputable and knows what they're doing. Or, because they know you don't know the city, they'll take 20 minutes to drive somewhere that's just around the corner. And this happened to me the very first time I was in Berlin. Yeah, I would say don't be embarrassed to look at your Google maps and see if they're going like right. the google maps way maybe there's traffic they know about you don't know about or a shortcut maybe but if you see that you know you're trying to go here and they're kind of really going around maybe you can ask them like hey where exactly are we going i wouldn't be too embarrassed to ask them no actually i i might be uh no no but but, but, but but don't be and the big lesson for all of these is when you feel uncomfortable there's nothing wrong with saying stop the car i want to get out and uh, a big point on this is fake taxis. Now this happened to be once in London. I take a long bus from the airport, several taxi drivers, uh, you know, just sitting around. And this guy come up to me, hey, do you need a ride to your hotel? Yeah, sure. I start walking with him, but he walks away from where all the other taxi cabs are, this back alley, and it's just a random van with no meter, no taxi. Oh, no, I'm good, man. And I started, I walked away and he got very angry but because he was a, what they call a, a black taxi, which is unregistered. And who knows where that guy's going to drive you or who's waiting for you when you get there. So. A black sea, if you will. Black sea, exactly. Now, another time I might take a taxi is we drank too much. Like this whiskey you're about to drink right now. Whiskey? Yeah. Ooh, that's better. Sure is. Cheers. Ooh, that waiter didn't scam us. No. It's good. <laughs> no check here. <laughs> And guys, it would really help us out if you could hit subscribe down below. But first, buy the like button, a bottle of Glen Morangi. You know, he just gave away a million dollars to a Nigerian prince. So- Oh, it's a good investment. I have a feeling he's not getting that back, so the bottle of whiskey would help. <laughs> Definitely would. The second uh, scam, I've seen this a lot in Berlin, actually. Uh, less so now, because a lot of people get their tickets on their phones, mm -hmm. or we have the Deutschland ticket, where you have, you know, a ticket for everywhere around. You still can get paper tickets. You can get, you know, day tickets, 
short tickets, seven day tickets, one right. month tickets even on paper. And there might be people in the S-Bahn or U-Bahn stations who are trying to sell you an old ticket or a fresh ticket that you can stamp yourself and use. Don't do this. I personally am screwed by this. Mm. Someone sold me a ticket for cheaper than the monthly ticket was, so I bought it. It looks pretty clean, so I restamped it and I got caught and the ticket controller noticed because it was probably pretty, I guess it was pretty obvious. I was young and stupid. Yeah, but when you're when you're new to Berlin and maybe you don't notice, because like sometimes it's actually hard to see where the date is on there. Right. And so they're often selling you old tickets. Because you have I, to stamp them. Yeah. I mean, I, I once had somebody uh, sell me a ticket that looked real because it was. It was just stolen from a, from a ticket vetting machine in which they'd oh. used explosives to do so. Um... <laughs> Shit. <laughs> that sucks. <laughs> So just, just, you know, get your tickets the, the normal way. Vending machines or use the app. Yes, yeah, why even touch paper? Use the app. This next one, you can't really say no because often you don't even know what's happening and that is pickpockets and they are rife in Europe. I, I think a lot of Americans hear that when you come to Europe, like watch out, everywhere pickpockets. It's really not that dramatic, but they do exist and you have a little street smarts on you. Um, you probably won't get pickpocketed. Don't walk around with your bag open. Backpacks maybe in a really crowded area. You know, look out, keep your stuff front pocket or deep in a bag. But even front pockets, like these guys are so good that they will lift a wallet out of your pocket and you will not, you think I would I would feel it? You'd be wrong. But like these guys are professionals and they work in teams. So the second one gets your wallet, he's already passed it on to a different person. So you run after the guy who took it, but he no longer has it anymore. You really got to watch out. I have, I have fallen victim uh, once to pickpocket in Greece. They removed uh, stuff out of my backpack, unzipped it completely, did not feel or hear a thing. Oh, these, wow. These guys uh, were good. Yeah. And I, I have seen this in Berlin as well. Somebody went behind a couple with a scarf covering his arm and he was kind of like awkwardly walking really close behind them. And I was like, watch out. And the guy ran away. I was like, that guy's hand is in her purse. It was just, it was just obvious, but they didn't know. Yeah, the good ones are really good. Uh, you know, when, when someone's- the good ones are to, really good. The good ones are really good. <laughs> when someone tries to talk to me really close and I feel a little sketchy, I put my hands in my front pockets. You know, I, I, I try to hold on to the things that I think might get stolen while they're talking to me and trying to distract me. Yeah. Uh, but even the bad ones, it can work too. Like very obvious, if you're on the subway and you're holding your phone next to the door, I've heard of stories where people run by, grab your phone, doors close on the closed. subway, they're gone, yeah. and you don't know how to get home because your phone is now gone and unlocked. Absolutely, and he gave a really good tip, is when you're walking around, Thanks. you will, you always give good tips, man. And somebody will come up to you and just ask for direction, ask you questions. Sometimes what that person is, is he is a member of a two man or two woman team, or, Go ahead, let's, let's just cover all the bases. It's about the distraction. As he's distracting you, somebody else is taking the wall. So what I've come to do just from my time in Europe, anytime somebody stops me on the streets or I'm traveling about, my hands immediately cover both my pockets and I continue talking to the person that way, just so in case that's what they wanna do, it, no, ain't, it ain't gonna happen. It doesn't mean, you know, don't trust people. These things happen, especially, you know, in like cities like Barcelona, Rome, a lot of these very, very, very popular tourist cities with very, um, small city centers. Luckily, Berlin does not have that problem. But it happens on the trains uh, yeah. during Russia. And again, I think we don't know how much it happens in Berlin because we're not the target. So I think it probably happens more in Berlin than we True. probably think it does. Look at my does. phone yeah. Well, yeah. there you go. You know what I'm Somebody didn't mention that before. I did not. Yeah. This next one is, and this kind of goes in with, uh, there's, there's the rose and the ring scan. They all kind of go together. It's all about handing you something that they claim is free, but it's really not. Now, you yeah, nice. Now you've been victim just like I have to the rose scam. I wasn't a victim, I was a target. I was with my partner and we're walking around Rome and a guy asked, he's like, hey, do you want a rose? And I was like, no, I don't want a rose because personally, I don't think it's very romantic to buy a rose from a guy and just give it to someone. I like to pick my own roses, you know? And he's like, no, no, this one's free. And I was like, I mean, really? Okay, so I took the, I took the rose. Later we walked, he comes behind me. I give, I give it to my partner. He walks behind me and he's like, oh, that'll be five euro. And I was like, I'm not giving you five euro for a rose. Like three euros, like, I'm not giving you money for a rose. That was, you said it was free. And then, you know, they, they, they keep really hounding you. And I just like, just, let's give it back. So we gave it back to the gentleman and he went away. But I have heard them getting more aggressive and saying they're gonna call the cops, which I mean, go ahead, call them. You're what? the one who's scamming me. Go ahead. And, and then of course, do? but the problem is, a lot of tourists. You're in a new land. It's a new culture. It's a new language. You're uncomfortable, anyways. People, they you you get scared and you just want the problem to go away, and so you just pay. And so that's why they think they can get away with it because often they do. Here comes what we call the classic. <laughs> sympathy scam, a fake injury, they pretend to be blind, they pretend to be mute, and they come up to you usually asking you to sign a petition, a form, basically saying, which don't really make sense. Don't and what the don't, forms are about. Yeah, they're about like saying, oh, I support 
mute and deaf people and oh, um, I don't really understand the form. Um, and they hand, it, they hand it to you and, and they're like pointing, I can't speak, I can't hear, please donate. But often you'll find out they not only can speak, but they can hear once the police start coming. <laughs> right, uh, if you wanna donate, that's wonderful. Find your own charity, uh, do some research on it and donate through Absolutely. the proper channels. Yeah. Uh, a lot of people are trying to ask you for donations on the streets. Maybe they, some of them, are, not all of them are scammers. Some do mean well, but generally it's just easier just to do your own things, do your own um, research for your own charities and donate that way. This next one, I think it hurts the most because you know, like when you're traveling or you've moved somewhere, you know, you're walking around. It's 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 fun but exhausting, right? Yeah, and sure. like eventually you get hungry or you want one of the local you're in Germany, oh, I want to try a German beer. You go to like a cafe, go to whatever. It says it's one price, but what they eventually do is they charge you the tourist price, which is almost double or double what they would have charged a wow. local. And it has happened to me. Has it? It has happened to me. I mean, it's probably happened to me too. I just didn't notice or just didn't um, didn't yeah. care enough. It happened to me in Paris, Paris once. Our first day, first hour in Paris, we're like, we're gonna go to a Parisian restaurant and get that cheese and all that kind of stuff and some French wine and all that kind of good stuff. Funny story, they had no French wine in the menu. All they had was California wine, which is where I just flew from. So yeah, <laughs> that's all they offered that restaurant. That's when, that's when I just get up and leave. Yeah. This, this is not the restaurant for me in Paris. But anyways, the guy next to us, I can't remember who it was. He had this meal that just looked great. We're like, ooh, we'll get two of those. That looks great. They gave us meal and then when the bill came we were like that's not but the menus are now out of our hands they're gone you know it's like and like that's not what the cost was and the guy was still there and we asked him how much did you pay for that it's called a sandwich 10 euro and for us the exact same sandwich was 20 euro each you know what i mean so it was a clear ripper off we had, uh, we had a little argument with the guy and eventually uh yeah, left after paying the absorbent amount of money. So you've got to watch out for that. See where the tourists are, and you're, you're going to see this. Every you know piazza, whatever, right. is going to have all the restaurants. Just go down a few side streets, one, exactly. two, three side streets. You're going to find the better places there. You're going to hear the Italian, you're going to hear the German, you're going to hear the actual, and you'll get cheaper prices, better food. Honest um, people. And honest people. And it's also just much more fun to explore the little side streets and, and eat these the little restaurants. These local places, yeah, because you're going to get food. Again, that's way better quality. A lot of these, you you know, if you're at Vatican City, the restaurant right outside the gates of Vatican City is gonna have the worst food possible because they don't have to care about return visitors because they get fresh people every day. They're gonna give exactly. you the worst pasta, the worst orange juice, the worst everything. Before we end, I have one good story. Okay. This is one of the few times I got scammed and didn't really care because it was just kind of amusing. So I, I was in Athens and I was walking about and had an old man stop me, ask for the time. Now for me, hands went on the pockets because I was like, it was just clear something was off. This is a, you know, this is a pocket situation. This is a hold up. This is a big, this is a big pocket situation. Oh, you're from America. So my cousin is at school there, like, you know, creates some sort of a connection. Oh, great. And we're talking for like 20 minutes. I'm like, maybe this is just a nice old man. This is going, this is okay. okay. Some, there are some nice old men out and there. And this is my first day in Greece and I'm by myself. Like, just have a nice connection with an old man. Ah, uh, what's the local alcohol? They have it in, um, Naki. Raki, right? In, in Greece, right? Raki, yeah, yeah. Is it? Or is it Uli? Oh, yeah, Uzo. 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 Raki is from Turkish, uh, Turkish also Bulgaria, okay. Eastern European. Uzo. Okay, Uzo. Is that very local, the, the Greek Uzo before? I hadn't, I'd heard of it. I was like, he's like, I know the great place. Let's go over. I'm like, okay. I'm so like, kind of like, how am I, what's the scam here? I don't know what's going on. And you've clearly been scammed so much when you meet yeah. a new person, you're like, how are they scamming me? Yeah, well, because you know, it's happened a few times, so, and you learn from your mistakes. Sad. Man. And he's like, I'll buy you some Uzo. Great. So we go to this restaurant, which was fairly empty, odd. And the guy clearly knew the bartender, gave like a very familiar nod or something. Yeah, and I was like, okay, interesting, whatever. Here comes the Uzo, we drink. Would you like another one? I was like, sure. So they got two Uzos in, you know, and you know, they're not cheap. And then it was, I was like, oh, sir, sorry, I gotta go. You wanna pay or should we? And she looked at me and goes, oh, I don't have any money. There's the scam. He wanted free Uzo, this old man. He just gets drunk off of free Uzo from- I love it. That's not a scam, that, that's a hustle. I'm like, this is just an 80 old man who just wants to be plastered all the time for free. Respect. Respect. If that's life you wanna live. <laughs> I learned my lesson. <laughs> Be cautious, don't avoid people, just be cautious. There might be hidden agenda. Stick it around to make sure there isn't, and then, you know, meet a local, have a good time. One of the best things about traveling is meeting new people and getting to know the culture, and not totally. everyone is there is there to scam you. Uh, there are people, but you know, it's not most. No, now, is this a scam? This is not a scam, this is glad. This is, this is one of my favorite whiskeys. Yeah, Yay. Now guys, thanks for coming by. Please subscribe, hit that super thanks. Uh, don't forget the like button, because you know, he's he's had some trouble times. So. He has really, past few episodes, not yeah. a good time. And everyone, please uh, stay safe, stay healthy, and of course, that's you. Stay thirsty. Bye. <laughs>
Welcome back. I'm Jeff. And I'm Alex. I didn't like that. Jeff. Okay, get through it. But first, buy the like button a bottle of Glen Morangi. You know, he just paid 